Hello everyone, my name is Philip Booth. I am an engineer here at the InterSystems Corporation and today I will be taking you through building out some of the various components in our IRIS HL7 appointment scheduling demo. If this is your first time seeing this demo then I wouldn't start here. If you take a look in the description there will be a link to a demo walkthrough video. The walkthrough is a great place to get started. It will give you some background into exactly what our demo is doing and will help lay a nice foundation for understanding what I'm going to show you here. Before we get started on the content of this video, I'd like to start by talking about some of the prerequisites that you will need in order to really be able to follow along. To start, you will need a GitHub account in order to be able to pull the demo code. Next, you'll need a Docker Hub account to be able to pull the iris images required to run the demo. You'll need the Eclipse text editor with the Atelier plugin installed. And lastly, you'll need an AWS developer account and you need this because it needs to be configured to interact with Amazon's simple notification service so that you can send SMS messages. So there are plenty of resources out there to take you through setting up a GitHub account and a Docker Hub account, so I won't spend time going over that in this video. However, I will take you through getting the appropriate AWS credentials and getting the Atelier plugin installed on your Eclipse editor so you don't have to spend too much time with those tasks. So without further ado, let's jump on in. So to start, we will get our AWS security credentials set up correctly for running the demo. Before you can set up security credentials, you will first need an AWS developer account. So if you don't have one of those, I suggest pausing the video here, going to the sign up page, it's the one you're looking at right now, and getting an AWS account. If you do already have an AWS developer account, then we can move on. You want to come to the AWS management console. From the management console, you can select your name, my security credentials, continue to security credentials. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new user that has the security credentials required to access Amazon's simple notification service. So I already have a user set up here that does that. The user's name is Phil. And I created a group for this user called SNS Test, and if we take a look at this group, we can see that it has the following policies attached to it. I am read-only access, and Amazon SNS full access. So what we're going to do is create a user that has the attached policy Amazon SNS full access. So to get started, we're going to create a new group with access to Amazon's simple notification service. You go to Groups. We need to create a new group. You can name it whatever you want. I will call it SNS Test 2. Next step. And then now it's asking you to attach a policy type. So this is pretty much saying which services in AWS do you want to give this group access to. So for us, that is SNS Full Access. Next step. Create group. So now that our group has been created correctly and it has access to Amazon's simple notification service, we need to create a new user and assign it to this group. So we'll go to Users, Add User. Once again, you can call it what you want. And it's going to ask you for the access type. So here we are going to select Programmatic Access. This is just a user that we are configuring to have access to a specific service. We don't need this user to go into our management console and spin up EC2 instances or anything like that. It's solely just so we can get the credentials that we need to send SMS notifications. So this is sufficient. Go to permissions and we are going to add the group that we just created. Next tags, we don't need any of these. Review it. Group is correct. Username. Create user. So now that the user is created, this user has both an access key ID and a secret access key. These two credentials are very important and are going to be used to sign any of the REST requests that we make to Amazon's simple notification service. So you can come here and download this as a CSV and put them somewhere safe because we'll need them when we are configuring credentials in our demo. 
Next, I will take you through getting the demo to run locally on your machine. What we are looking at right now is the GitHub repository for appointment demo. So if we scroll down, you can see we have the same image for the landing page that you've already seen. And we have a build it yourself section. So that's what I want to take you through right now. If you want to build it yourself, you have two options. If you take a look at the topmost command, you have the command for pulling the just the regular stable image uh, and you have a command below that to let you pull the student image. So the two images are exactly the same except in the student image what we've done is we've removed some of the interoperability pieces out so you have the opportunity to build them yourself. So that's what I'm going to take you through today. So let's go ahead and copy this command here and we will open up a terminal, put it in there and run it. So it's unable to find the images because they haven't downloaded them yet. So it's going to go through and download everything that we need. This will take a little bit of time. I went ahead and sped this part of the video up because I don't want you guys to just have to sit there and watch Docker install all the necessary dependencies. All right, and it looks like it's just finished. It is starting the production. Now, if we want to test and make sure that this is working, what we can do is try and log on to the demo landing page. So we can come here. The address is localhost port 52773 slash CSP user demo.csp. And if you come to this link, you should be asked for credentials to log into the running instance of Iris. If you see this page when you come to this URL, it means that not only did your demo download correctly, but it's also currently running on your machine. So if you want to go inside this instance, we can put in a username of superuser and a password, sys, S-Y-S, all caps, and log in. So now we're on the landing page of our demo. And if you've made it this far, you should give yourself a pat on the back because you officially have the demo running on your computer successfully. Once you have Eclipse Photon installed on your machine, the next thing that you need to do is go ahead and get the Atelier plugin. So to do that, you come up to the top, click Help, navigate to the Eclipse Marketplace, and you want to search for Atelier. And what you're going to install is InterSystems Atelier 1.3. I already have this installed on my instance of Eclipse, so it says installed, but this is where you would come if you want to get it. Now that you have Atelier installed on your version of Eclipse, let's go ahead and configure Eclipse so we can make changes to our demo source code. To start, we're going to come to the, up to the right hand corner and click the Atelier perspective. That'll be a box with an AT inside of it. You have two tabs, Atelier Explorer and Server Explorer. We're going to start at Server Explorer, hit the plus button, and we need to configure a new server connection. So before we do this, we need to verify that our demo is in fact running on our machine. If you want to do that, you can open up a terminal and you can run docker container list. And you should see an image called Iris Demo Appointment SMS running on your machine. If you don't see this, it means it's not running and you won't be able to connect to the server. If your demo is in fact running on your machine, you can go ahead and connect. So let's name our connection. Iris Appointment Demo. The web port is 52773. We can see that here. Username, super user, and then our password, SYS, all caps, and then we're going to test the connection. All right, so that looks good. Now that we have our server connected, we can go ahead and create a new Eclipse project for the underlying source code. File new Atelier project, project name, Iris, appointment demo, location, wherever you happen to clone your repo. 
So for me, that would be underneath pbooth, git, appointment SMS demo. And I want to go through until I reach the appointment atelier project. The atelier project is our entry point into our source code. Open. You need to link it to a server, the one that we just created here. Iris appointment demo. And under namespace, user. And then we're going to hit finish. After doing that, what you should see is your server explorer, Iris appointment demo, and an associated project, Iris appointment demo. So now that you have your demo running successfully on your machine, we can get started on the process of building out the integration layer ourselves. To start, let's open up the landing page of our demo, navigate to the bottom left hand corner of the screen, and press the Start Demo button. This will open up many different pages of the management portal for our running instance of Iris. In this section, we are going to be looking at three pages in particular. The Credentials page, where we will be putting in our generated AWS credentials. The Production page, where we will be building out the integration layer of our application ourselves. And the Rule Editor. So let's go ahead and get started. So first what we'll do is we'll come to our Credentials page. On the credentials page, we're going to select the AWS access key credential, and it will highlight and turn gold like this. And then in the username section, what we're going to do is put in the access key, and the password is the secret access key that was generated. After you do that, come here and save it. And now those credentials are associated with this ID, AWS access key credential. Next, what we'll do is we're going to configure our production. So in our production, we need a service, process, and an operation. Business services connect with external systems and receive messages from them. Business processes receive messages from other business hosts in the production and either process the requests or forward them to other business hosts. And when I use the term business hosts, I'm referring to either a service, a process, or an operation. Finally, business operations connects with external systems and they send the messages to them. Business operations receive messages from other business hosts in the production and typically send them to external systems. So let's get started building our production, also known as the integration layer of our demo. Our production is going to consist of one business service, one business process, and two business operations. The business service is our entry point into our integration layer. The service is responsible for watching a directory on our Docker container called EMR HL7 feed. This directory is the location where generated HL7 messages get sent. Anytime an HL7 message hits this directory, it is sent to the business process, where it then gets routed to our two business operations that we're going to create. Let's build our business service first. We're going to come here and select the plus button. This is going to open up the business service wizard. So we're trying to create an HL7 input. Input type, file because we're watching a directory, and then the HL7 service name. So for us, EMR HL7 feed. And then it's going to say HL7 service target. We're going to create a new router. So what we're doing here is we're adding in the business process that's associated with our EMR HL7 feed. Next, we're going to select the HL7 schema category. Come here. The schema that we're using is 2.5. So what we're doing here is we're saying the HL7 message that we're going to be dealing with conforms to the standard set in schema 2.5. After that, we come to file path, select here. And from here, we're going to navigate to our root directory. We're going to select EMR HL7 feed and then file in. And this is a directory that our generated HL7 messages get sent to. So the service watches this directory for any new messages, and as messages are generated and sent here, it will send them across our integration layer. From there, we're going to hit Enable Now. OK. OK again. And if you notice, we've generated our service, our EMR HL7 feed. We've generated our process, EMR HL7 feed router. 
but we still don't have our operations. So let's go ahead and generate our first operation. First we're going to select the plus button. Operation class, we're going to select AWS BO SNS operation. The operation name, this just happens to be stored for me but you would write in AWS SNS operation and enable now. Okay. Now that the operation has been generated, you can select it. And if you take a look at the settings, there are some defaults in here. The AWS region, your AWS access key credential. This is the credential that we've already configured. And the AWS hashing algorithm. So this is used when you're signing your request that you're then sending to their API. And we're using SHA-256. So now that you have everything generated, you can come here select processes and if you notice you see a line from the AMR HL7 feed to the feed router but you don't see one between the router and the AWS SNS operation so what this means is currently our production is configured where HL7 messages hit the feed they then get sent to our feed router and nothing happens so let's go ahead and configure our EMR HL7 feed router so we can get our HL7 messages sent to the AWS SNS operation. We're going to come up here to the rule editor, hit OK, open, and we're going to open up our routing rule. So right now what we're doing is we're saying anytime an HL7 message gets sent to our EMR HL7 feed router, what is the desired behavior? So for us, what we want is any time a message gets sent from the EMR HL7 feed, we want this message to be routed to the AWS SNS operation so our SMS messages can be sent. So let's come to our rule editor. First, we're going to set the constraint. Double click here. The source. Where is our message coming from? For us, the source is the EMR HL7 feed. Hit OK schema category once again it's 2.5 and then here we need to say the message type if we come here to the UI what you'll notice is the message type is the notification of new appointment booking so in the rule editor here that message type just happens to be SIU 12 SIU 12 okay so now our constraint is all set. Select rule, hit the plus button, and we're going to add a when. So for our condition for when, it's just one. We always want this to happen. Anytime a message gets sent to the router, we always want it to be then routed to the AWS SNS operation. So we're going to go here. This return is going to be removed. Hit when, and then we're going to add a send. The target, AWS SNS operation, OK. And we're also going to do one more thing here. So as our routing rule stands right now, anytime an HL7 message gets sent to the router, it's going to be sent as an HL7 message to our SNS operation. We don't want this behavior. What we want to do is transform this message using our iris demo DTL HL7 to SMS transformer. So what this is doing is it's saying here's our HL7 message. Here are the properties that we want to be taken off the message and then put into a message of a new type iris demo BO SNS request. We have phone number, first name, last name, and appointment time. So right now an HL7 message is going to be sent to the router, it's going to be sent through this data transformer, and then it's going to be sent to the operation. So now we're going to save this. Now if we come back to our production, and we click here, we notice everything's connected. Our messages come in, they get sent to our feed router, and then they get sent to this operation. We have one more operation that we need to complete before we're finished. So what we have right now is one operation, 
our AWS SNS operation that's responsible for taking the details from our generated HL7 message and sending that as an SMS notification. But we also want to store these details on the database. So let's create an operation for that. We're going to come here, hit the plus button. Operation class is Iris Demo BO appointment operation. The operation name, appointment store, Oop. store, enable now, and hit OK. If we come back to our router and we click it, we notice that it's not connected to the appointment store. So let's go ahead and configure that ourselves. Come back to our rule editor. We're going to plus another send. Double click for target. We're going to send it to the appointment store this time. Now, unlike when we're sending our messages to our AWS SNS operation, we're not going to send this message through a data transformation layer like we're doing here. This is just going to send the straight HL7 message to this operation, and we'll handle the logic for parsing it and grabbing the details we want on the operation side. We won't do it through a data transformation layer. So now that this is all set up, you can hit Save. OK. We'll come back to our production. And now if we click this again, we see that it's connected to everything. So we get our message. Our HL7 message goes to the router, and every single time it gets sent to both the appointment store operation as well as the AWS SNS operation. Now that we've finished configuring our production, let's go ahead and test our AWS SNS operation to make sure that we've configured everything correctly and that we can send SMS notifications. Let's select the operation, go to the Actions tab, and click Test. Request type, and input your phone number, and the message, test, and then invoke testing service. All right, so I just received that text message. It looks like everything's been set up correctly. Since we verified that our AWS SNS operation is working correctly, let's go ahead and do a full end-to-end -end test. From here, we're going to navigate to the UI, fill in the inputs here, update our HL7 message, and then we're going to send it. From here, we're going to navigate to the message trace. So, all right, we received our text message correctly. We're going to refresh. We're going to come to the most recent message. All right, so let's take a look at what's going on here. To start, we generated our HL7 message. Double check that the properties look good. It went to our router. From there, it went to our AWS SNS operation, phone number, message, first name, last name, appointment time. And it was also sent to the appointment store operation as a straight HL7 message, but it looks like we got an error here. So let's take a look and see if we can figure out what's going on. We have a general exception named error saving appointment. And the error message says property iris demo data patient gender is required. If we want to know where this error is being thrown, we can come down to the class section and it says it's being thrown in iris demo bo appointment operation. So from here, we need to open up Eclipse and take a look at that class and see if we can figure out what's going on. We need to open this class up in Eclipse, and this class contains only one method, and it is a store appointment method. So this method takes in the HL7 message as input, and then it uses the properties on the HL7 method to generate a patient object, and then take that patient object, store it on the, an appointment object, and try and save that to the database as a new appointment. However, we've intentionally taken out the patient gender and the appointment specialty, and that's why we're getting an error saving it. So if we come to the patient object here, 
The gender is a required property. And if you take a look at the appointment object, the specialty is also required. So you're not allowed to save either the new patient or the new appointment to the database until we have these properties filled out. So right now, I'm going to give you a hint into how you can go about figuring this out. If we start taking a look at the first name, we can see that on our HL7 message, we can get the value at PID group 1, patient identification group 1, PID colon 5, 1, Dot two. And if you navigate to our UI into the first name section of our message, you can see in the beginning here it says 5.1.2. So what we're trying to get off this message is this F here. And as you can see, we just have an 8. The other thing that we're trying to do is grab this specialty. The specialty is located down here. And here we have it as 4.1. So take a couple minutes, pause the video here, and, and try and see if you can figure this out on your own. If you get absolutely stuck, continue the video from here and I can show you how to do it. So now I'll show you the solutions to correctly grab the missing properties. If we scroll down here, this is the solution for patient gender. And this is the solution for specialty. If you're asking yourself, why the heck would these guys make us solve it this way? Uh, it's really just to demonstrate the value in our data transformation tools. So Iris for Health, out of the box, it gives you functionality for handling HL7 messages. So if we come back here and we go to our production, remember we have our feed router here. And if we take a look at the rule editor, for the appointment store, we're just sending a straight HL7 message, but for the, our AWS SNS operation, we send it through a data transformation layer. So if we want to take a look at what's going on here, we can go to our data transformation builder. Here it takes in an HL7 message, and it gives you a nice UI for grabbing the phone number, first name, last name, and appointment time, so you don't have to worry about trying to find the segments on your own. If we come back to Eclipse, we need to save these updates. And what's going to happen here is we have a version conflict. So again, our Eclipse is connected to our running instance of Iris, and we also have our source code on our machine. And we need to be able to both get changes from our source code and bring them to our server, and take the changes from our server and bring them into our source code. So right now, we're in a situation where our project source code has updates that we want in our server. So what we want to do here is we want to say save local copy. And now these updates are being compiled into our server. So now that we've compiled our updates, let's go ahead and test them and make sure that they fixed our issue. To do that we can come over into our production. And if you notice the appointment store is red. What this means is since this operation errored out, it stopped running this business operation. So we can double click it and restart it. So now it'll be restarted and it will pick up our compiled changes. Next what we can do is click on our EMR HL7 feed, go to the message viewer, select the most recent message, and then let's resend this message to make sure it worked correctly. All right, resend. And now we've received our text message. And if we go ahead and select this message, what you'll see is here, the first time we ran it, when we ran into an error, here it went through successfully, no error at all. Well, if you've made it this far, guys, I just want to say thank you for your time. I'd also like to add that you should give yourself a hand. You've successfully implemented this demo yourself. I hope it was helpful in demonstrating how complex integrations can be built on top of Iris. I know that there's no way that I could go over every single detail of the demo. All the code is available for you on GitHub if you'd like to pull it yourself, and I've included the URLs in the description of the video, so if you want to check them out. 
Lastly, if you have any questions or concerns, please, please, please leave us comments below. We really do read them all because it helps us make videos like this better. As an InterSystems employee, I'm building things with Iris all the time, so there may be things that I gloss over or forget to cover because I just take them for granted. So if that is the case, please let me know and leave a comment. Thanks, guys.